Hi, my name is Barrett Nelson from On The Trail Creations in Fairbanks, Alaska. And today on this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a silk screen like the one I used to make the silk screen raven on my raven card kit. Uh, we're not going to make a, a raven at first because that's too many details to cut out, but um, but this process will be exactly the same. And, and then, so we'll start with uh, what we're making it out of and all the way to printing it. So... The first thing that you need is some um, iron-on vinyl. So I use this one. I keep using different brands of things in my videos. That wasn't ever my intention to advertise all these products. But anyway, this is the one I use. Um, fusible vinyl. So it looks like this. It's got uh, paper and lines on one side and shiny vinyl on the other side. So the first thing that I'm going to do is trace my design so you can trace you can draw something freehand um, I think you could even use a hole punch but I'm just going to make a, a simple heart for the example for now I'm drawing it on the paper side and if you're tracing a design you don't have to reverse it like you do with some processes because the vinyl ends up going on the back side so it will be it will end up correct. So if you're tracing a word or whatever, you can just trace it. As long as you're on the paper side, you can trace it in the, the proper direction and it will end up right. Um, if I have a fairly large space like this, then I like to put something else in the middle of it because the ink tends to run or leak through if you have a really big space. Um, and plus it just adds to the design. So, so in this case, I just drew another heart in the middle of my bigger heart. Now the next step is super important. I often forget to do it, but it is, if you forget to do it, you'll find out in a hurry why you need to do it. So you flip it over and you can see right through. Um, I'm taking my Sharpie and I'm just scribbling over the whole design. And the reason for that is when we cut this out, we're going to iron it onto some organza, which is the sheer fabric. And if you don't do the scribbling, the invisible plastic and the invisible fabric makes your design disappear and you it's really hard to see. Uh, so this helps you be able to see where your design is. So now that I've got it traced and scribbled, the next step is to cut out um, my big heart and my little heart. I've already done that on another sample here and it's very curly until you get it ironed down. Um, and here's my little middle heart. So the next step is to fuse that onto a piece of organza, just any sheer fabric, but I just use um, organza. So the next step is to iron that on. All right, it's hard to see, but I've already got my organza on a piece of uh, Teflon, a Teflon pressing sheet, and then I've peeled the plastic, or the paper, sorry, off of the middle heart, and then I still need to peel the paper off of this one, and it's a little bit sticky, but not too much, so you just have to separate those, and peel the paper off, and now it's not nearly as curly, and then I'm just going to set this here, you can move it around a little bit, line it up how you want, and it does kind of stick. Um, it's a, just a bit tacky. Then I'm going to take another pressing sheet and just using a dry iron. Um, it just takes a few seconds. It wants to stick to my sheet. Oh, and I got Sharpie on my sheet too. Hmm. Don't know that I've noticed that before. So. Anyway, this is now ready for printing, but it's maybe hard to tell, but if I hadn't scribbled all over it, it would be very, very, very hard to see where that design was. But now we can see it. So now I'm going to set things up for the actual printing. So I just accidentally got some Sharpie on my pressing sheet, and normally the way I clean these, if I get um, glue from Fusible Web or anything on it, is with a dryer sheet, just a scrunched up dryer sheet, and it looks like it's working with the Sharpie too. So I thought I'd... Stick that in. So, back to clean. All right, now I've covered my work surface with just a cheap vinyl tablecloth. They work great for messy things like this. Uh, and I'm going to be using fabric screen printing ink. 
Um, there's, it comes in several colors. It even comes in transparent, and so you can make it thinner if you want and more transparent, so that's kind of fun. Uh, I often will just put it in a smaller tube. It's easier to work with a tube with a, a tip on it. Um, and then if I mix my colors, then I often mix them in a Ziploc bag so I can smush them together. And then, then I can cut the tip off the Ziploc and squirt it into my little tube. But today I'm just using plain black anyway. And I have an old gift card. Um, there's a lot of different things you can use for uh, to drag your ink, but this works great. And I'm back to my Raven silkscreen now. So I want to use it. It's got a plastic side, and I have it turned this way so you can see the design a little bit better. Um, but I want to use it the other way. I want it to be dragging across the organza side so that I'm not scraping my design off. Um, and just like the heart, this one has a little piece in the middle. You wouldn't, with a regular stencil, you wouldn't be able to do that. You can't just put something in the middle of a hole. But because this is ironed on, you can do that. Um, and so I have a little wing in the middle of my raven, and that, that helps the ink not build up as much, but it also just adds a design feature. So I'm going to put that on my fabric. I always cut the fabric a little bit bigger than I need it because it's hard to, once, the, once I do a couple and it gets ink all over, it's hard to see exactly, line it up exactly how you want. Um, there is a way to do more than one color though with registration marks and um, so you need a separate screen for each color so maybe we'll do that on another video. But for today I just need one color and just squirt a little bit of my ink across the top and grab my gift card and I'm going to hold down really tightly um, all the layers here. Looks like I missed the tail a little bit. Set it back on a paper plate and there you go. And then I'll just slide that out of the way and I just keep holding my screen because now it's wet and messy so that looks like it's wrinkly. I'm gonna grab another one. Let's do one more. So you can see now it's getting harder to line up because it's getting messy but And every once in a while you don't even need to squirt the ink on because it starts to build up on the credit card. And once in a while you'll get one that the ink leaks out a little bit. And if that happens, you need to just stop and go wash it in warm water and uh, let it dry before you do any more. Once it leaks under, if the, any ink leaks under, it will just keep doing that on every print. So you need to clean it up. So I'll just do one more here. And But these screens last for quite a while, so you can get quite a few prints out of them. Eventually they do sometimes come apart, uh, but if it does start to peel off, you can let it dry completely and then use your pressing sheet and iron it again and usually get a little bit more use out of it. And then when I'm done, I just take the lid off my ink and scrape as much as I can back in. And this can be heat set and it's supposed to be washable. Pretty much everything I do is decorative, so I don't ever test that out. But these work great for um, greeting cards and small, small projects. So pretty quick and easy way to do simple designs. There are lots of other ways to do more complicated designs. This is, ha this is something that you have to be willing to cut out with the scissors or razor blade or whatever. There are other ways to do it too, but that's all for today.